Welcome back, boys and girls. Today we're going to read chapter 22, Poppy Makes Up Her Mind. Though Poppy waited at the tree, Erith did not return. Knowing how unpredictable her friend was, she kept asking herself how long she should wait. After all, she had been with the mice longer than she planned. That certainly would have irritated the old porcupine. She began to think he'd done what he had threatened to do all along and trundled back to Dimwood Forest. Yet Poppy was quite aware her friend might be doing no more than taking a nap in a nearby log. Normally, Poppy would not have minded waiting, but she kept worrying that if she were going to save Rye, she needed to act swiftly. Having nothing better to do, she searched about the base of the cottonwood tree for some of Eret's quills to take back to the nest. When she failed to find any, she became fretful. She thought of sneaking into the beaver's lodge without the protection of quills was something she did not want to think about. Having no quills set off a nervous train of doubts in Poppy's mind. Would she be able to get into the lodge again? Was Rye's cage even breakable? What if she or he got hurt? Would they be able to use the vine to get out of the lodge? And what if freeing Rye did bring greater harm to the rest of his family? Maybe Valerian and Clover were right. Maybe it was all too dangerous. The more Poppy thought, the more doubts she had about her plan. Suddenly, Poppy felt an intense desire to race back to Dimwood Forest and hide. There, she would be safe and secure in the world she knew and loved best. It was bittersweet to recall that when she had begun this trip, she had been looking forward to a time of calm. Perhaps Erith was right. Perhaps it was better to be alone. And yet, she had fallen in love with Rye. Moreover, she had promised to help him. How could she abandon him? She could not, no more than she could abandon her feelings. Too agitated to wait for Erith any longer, Poppy hurried down the hill and crept back into the nest. It was very crowded. Some fifty and more mice were there, most of whom she had not seen before. She caught hold of Thistle. What's happening? Poppy asked. It's the rest of our family, Thistle explained. Valerian asked them to come hear about your plan. And are they for it or against it? Poppy asked. They can't make up their minds, Thistle confided. Poppy, I think we should do it, as long as we have quills to defend ourselves. Thistle, Poppy confided, I couldn't get the quills. Thistle blanched. You couldn't? My friend, the porcupine, has disappeared. Does that mean we can't rescue Rye? Thistle asked sadly. Poppy, feeling she had failed the young mouse, hardly knew what to say. I'm not sure, she replied. Valerian approached. Poppy, I sent word to the rest of the family about what you want to do, he informed her. It's so important I felt everyone should be involved in the decision. Attention, please, he cried. The mice hushed. For those of you who don't know her yet, Valerian said by way of an introduction, this is Poppy. She comes to us from far out east. She was a special friend of ragweeds. That makes her a good friend of ours. To this, there were murmurs of assent. We've heard what's happened to Rye and what choice we've been given, Valerian continued. Move off somewhere and hopefully have Rye freed or try to save Rye on our own and take our chances with the beavers. To be honest with you, your mother and I think it would be best to move on. Poppy here wants to rescue Rye. Since this concerns the whole family, we thought it would be wise for you to hear it for yourselves. Once again, Poppy found herself facing a world of grave golden faces. 
Momentarily, she thought of sharing her anxieties, but feared that if the mice knew how nervous she was, they would never give her help. Instead, she simply explained her plan for freeing Rye. Did you get those quills? Someone asked when she was done. I'm afraid not. A nervous twitter passed over the family. I do need some volunteers, Poppy said almost timidly. Curly Doc shyly lifted a paw. Paw, I I'll go, he offered. Me too, Thistle joined in. What about the rest of you? Poppy asked. Can I have your approval? Valerian cleared his throat. Poppy, if you don't mind waiting outside, I think it would be easier for us to make up our minds. It was a discouraged Poppy who left the nest. Once above the ground, she gazed down at the pond and the lodge where she knew Rye was being kept. Think of it, she told herself, as just another kind of dance. Thistle and Curly Doc emerged from the nest. Poppy looked at them expectantly. Thistle said, they think you're making a mistake, but they won't keep you from trying. They're going to move, so we're on our own. Poppy considered her young friends. Please, she said to them, you're very brave to volunteer, but it will be hard, maybe impossible. I won't think less of you if you change your minds. No way, Thistle said with a stubbornness that made Poppy think of ragweed. We're going with you. Curly Doc nodded in agreement. All right then, Poppy said briskly as she tried to stir up her own energy. The first thing we need to do is get a long piece of vine. Any idea where we can get one? The young mice exchanged looks. Maybe up by the berry thicket, Curly Doc suggested. With Curly Doc leading the way, the three mice scampered up the hill. A short run brought them up and over the ridge. On the far side, they went down into a sunny hollow. Before them lay an overgrown thicket of berry bushes and flowering honeysuckle vines. The air was filled with sweetness. We should be able to get a honeysuckle vine there, Thistle said. They're long and tough. The three mice were soon deep within the thicket. Cool and moist, it, the perfume was almost overpowering. Sticky, sweet scent of berries. How about this vine, Curly Doc asked. He was yanking on a green strand that twisted high above their heads and out of sight. It really needs to be long and strong, Poppy urged. It had to get us into the lodge and out. This one looks okay, Thistle called from another spot. She was joined by the others. Haul it in, Poppy said. While the other two worked to untangle the vine, they, she chewed through its roots. Then they began to pull. It's stuck, Thistle announced. Must be tied around something, Curly Doc agreed. No matter how hard the three pulled, the vine would not come. We can follow it along, Poppy suggested. Curly Doc was up front, Thistle was in the middle, and Poppy came behind. As they followed the vine, they became increasingly spread out, losing sight of one another. Suddenly, from deep within the thicket, there was a frantic call from Curly Doc. Help! he cried. Hurry! Fast! Poppy and Thistle dropped the vine and charged forward. Curly Doc was crouched down in terror. Looming over him was Aerith. And here's a picture of that. Aerith is all stuck in the brambles and the mice found him. Aerith! Poppy cried. Poppy, Aerith snapped. You simple smudge of a slimy slug, where have you been? Poppy grinned. I've been busy, but I've been looking for you. What are you doing here? Never mind, just get me out of here, I'm stuck. He pulled back and forth, but his quills continued to hold him fast. Aerith, Poppy said, this is Thistle and Curly Doc. 
They're brother and sister to ragweed. Ragweed, Eric said. I'm sick of talk about ragweed. Just get me out. I need to talk to you. What about? Just get me out. Poppy turned to Curly Doc and Thistle. They had been looking on in great puzzlement. It's all right, she told them. He's perfectly harmless. Bee butter, Erith roared. I am not harmless. I have a terrible temper. I say dreadful things. I'm a selfish old coot who does what he wants, when he wants, and doesn't care what anyone else wants. He's really good, Poppy said. Don't listen to her. I'm bad, Erith screamed. Nonetheless, the three mice set to work, chewing away at the vines that had captured Erith. Even as they did, the impatient porcupine tossed and pulled, trying to free himself. Finally, with a snap, he broke loose. Now, Erith said, tell those friends of yours to beat it. I have something important to tell you. I'm sure they could listen. It's private, mushhead. Poppy looked to Thistle and Curly Doc, who understood and scampered off. I've got something to tell you, too, Poppy said when they were gone. You have to listen to me first, Erith insisted. What I've been thinking is... He stopped suddenly bashful and tongue-tied. What is it? It's just that... What I think is... Now, see here, Poppy. I wish... I wish I had a piece of salt. Tell me what you wanted to say first. Are you sure? Push the barf button and take a bath. I just said so, didn't I? Well then, said Poppy, blushing with pleasure. Erith, I've fallen in love. You what? Erith whispered aghast. Fallen in love. With whom? Erith asked as he was trembling with emotion. Poppy smiled. I know it must seem strange, but you see, I met, well, actually, he's Ragweed's brother. His name is Rye, and he's, but what's the matter? Thief, crook, Erith yelled. I'll skewer him, whack him, mash him, turn him into skunk gunk. Erith, what are you talking about? You just think I'm too old, the porcupine ranted, rearing up and down as though bitten by ants. Too stupid, too big, too sour, too me. Abruptly, he whirled around and began to rush away. But that's not true, Poppy called after him. It's not. And what did you want to tell me? Forget it, Erith called back. I'm leaving. Where are you going? To Dimwood Forest, Pickleseed, he cried. Erith! Poppy called after him. Please don't go. I need you. You're on your own, traitor. The porcupine shouted as he tore from view. With great puzzlement, Poppy gazed after him. Something was surely the matter with her friend. With a sigh, she wished she understood him better. She glanced around to her great relief. She saw that in his fury, Erith had dropped some quills. She gathered them up and hurried to find Thistle and Curly Doc. And that's the end of chapter 22.